Our scripture today is Isaiah 42, verses 1 to 9. It says, Look at my servant, whom I strengthen. He is my chosen one who pleases me. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or raise his voice in public. He will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle. He will bring justice to all who have been wronged. He will not falter or lose heart until justice prevails throughout the earth. Even distant lands beyond the sea will wait for his instructions. God the Lord created the heavens and stretched them out. He created the earth and everything in it. He gives breath to everyone, life to everyone who walks the earth. And it is he who says, I, the Lord, have called to you to demonstrate my righteousness. I will take you by the right hand, by the hand, and guard you. And I will give you to my people Israel as a symbol of my covenant with them. And you will be a light to guide the nations. You will open the eyes of the, of the blind. You will free the captives from prison, releasing those who sit in dark dungeons. I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not give my glory to anyone else, nor share my praise with carved idols. Everything I prophesied has come true, and now I will prophesy again. I will tell you the future before it happens. So I'm not sure what Karen had planned for this, but it sure sounds to me like a testimony should come after this. Because it sounds like um, the Lord sets people free, and we should talk about it. So. Maybe God did have something planned. Um, so those that are speaking are Kenton, Kevin, Eddie, and myself. So if you don't mind, I'm, I guess I'm here, so I'll start. Um, so my testimony, uh, I, was, I was born um, into a church family. I guess I was Methodist, um, and I was baptized as a baby, and I went to church. But I never really, I wouldn't say I learned anything about it. Um, and I got confirmed, but you know, the things I remember about church camp, I remember canoeing, I remember playing basketball, I don't remember Jesus. Um, and so my parents got divorced and we moved away from, you know, church and I, I never just went back again. Uh, it's like I confirmed, graduated, and that was kind of it. Um, and so, I guess I wouldn't say, I guess it was a slow, slow, you know, becoming lost in a way. Um, and it took a while, you know, I became, um, I got into things like, you know, they weren't, they weren't so bad, but it was worldly things. You know, I, I would want to, you know, just have more things or better things than other people. You know, it's not like I wanted to kill somebody, but it was like, I just wanted things that God didn't like, you know, they, so I wasn't so bad, morally bad, but it was like I was just off kilter with what godliness was. Um, and so eventually I just, I started getting this anxiety and, you know, depression. Um, there was like an emptiness inside. I was missing something. Um, and I didn't quite know what it was. Uh, and I would try and fill it with other things that weren't godly, you know, because um, I didn't know what it was that I was missing. Nobody really told me. Uh, I would talk to my grandma, and she would say, go to church, go to church. And I would think, well, why? <laughs> What's the point? Um, she, she, I guess, knew, but she didn't outright tell me, and I kind of wish she would have spoken the truth to me at that time. Um, but, you know, Things got bad in my life, kind of, it hit a bad point, um, and I ended up, you know, losing my job and uh, ended up in a, like, the hospital for, you know, mental help, you know, I was in the pit, really, and something, you know, we, we ended up going to vacation. Uh, It was, it was my lowest point probably on that vacation to Virginia Beach and I just thought I'll take a walk, you know, think about what life's all about. And so I did 
I was walking along the beach and I remember something just grabbed my attention from the ocean and I just looked and it was just this beautiful sight. And I just can't explain it to you. It wasn't the sight that got me, but it was um, just the feeling. It was like I was looking at a, a beautiful landscape and I felt this overwhelming love, like a, a spirit of love kind of thing. And it just filled me with like happiness and joy and peace and all of the things that, you know, you read the Bible and it says God will give you the Holy Spirit. And I just, and it was weird too because I heard this song in my head. I can't really um, tell you what the song said, but it seemed to make sense to me. Uh, like it seemed to go together, but I couldn't tell you. Um, and, and I left just feeling great, like, wow, there's... I knew there was something else out there, something bigger, better than me, something uh, something to look forward to, but I didn't know what it was. So months went down the line where I didn't know what's going on, and I just had this feeling like, go to church. Kind of like my, my grandma said, go to church, go to church. It was in me. And um, so I tried to go to my friend's church, but it was COVID had hit. It wasn't time. Um, but they had an online service, and they, uh, I watched it, and they were talking about the wheat and the tares. Um, and it was about, you know, the separation, how there would be, like, the good, the good ones that got approved of, and then the not, not so good ones. And, um, I just thought, that's exactly what was in my life, you know, there were, there were great people that loved me, and they, they were the ones that just wanted to bring me down. I just, I felt that was the truth. Um, there was truth in that. And then um, he started talking about Jesus, the pastor. And I just thought, you know, this is it. This is exactly what I've been looking for. I finally found it. Um, and then he, he gave the invitation um, to come up. But I couldn't come up. But in my heart, I said, yes. You know, I believe in Jesus. Um, and then, then I told everybody, I was calling up people, and I called Kenton, I called uh, my dad, my grandma, my everybody, um, said, <laughs> I gave my life to Jesus. <laughs> um, and it was an exciting moment, like, it was the best thing ever. Because uh, I knew, I knew what would give me hope, I knew what would just fill my heart with joy. Um, and... And so, I, I went to church, I came to New Beginnings, um, and I started to learn. Um, I, I got into my Bible at the time I read every day, um, I read the whole Bible. It's just, I needed to know um, what was going on. And, and so, the excitement, it was like, it was such a great thing, but then I think God said, okay, you've been excited long enough. Now it's time to get you, get you, get you where I want you to be. So then I can tell God's been recently, you know, He's been testing me, He's putting me through the paces, He's getting me better, and He's, he's smoothing me out. I can tell. Um, but that's what it says in the Bible. You know, God is is faithful. God's holy. He wants us to be holy. Um, and so I found a scripture this morning, and. They really went with all of this. So it's Ezekiel 36, uh, 25 to 27. It says, Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. Your filth will be washed away, and you will no longer worship idols. And I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony stuff. <laughs> Stony, stubborn heart, and give you a tender, responsive heart. And I will put my spirit in you, so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. So, I guess my testimony is God has changed my life completely, and I'll follow Him forever and ever. Amen. 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 We might not be.
ungodly creatures, but we can be inspiring. Ken, come on up here, brother. I don't know how you follow that. <laughs> Bible when I came back in, I couldn't find it. Um, but yeah, so the Lord has definitely worked in my life. Um, and very similar to what Joseph was saying, there's there was things, and I didn't realize at the time, I didn't realize, I guess, you know, that there was an emptiness inside of me, that I was searching for something, um, something that I, I wanted, that I needed, um, like a, a passion within me for something and I think we all have that. Um, it comes out in different ways. And, you know, the things that Joseph went through, I can't relate to. But I can, there's things I went through that was things that I was searching to try to find meaning, trying to find fulfillment. And it's, um, I think as you grow up, there's all these molds that are kind of placed on you to be this person, be that person. This is, this is how you live. That's how you live. Um, and I was trying to fit into those molds, and none of them really fit. Um, and so it left me empty a lot of times. It left me going and searching for things that I thought would fill it, and didn't. And a lot of that is sin. A lot of that is fleshly things. And I guess the thing that I, I felt most compelled to go to for us today was that um, I really had to really had to search for Him. I really had to seek Him. And I have gone to church my whole life too. And even when you do, it doesn't mean that you're, you know, you just, you know, that's it. You know, you go to church and you get that training and it's good for you, but it doesn't make you um, saved necessarily. It doesn't make you on the right track. Um, and I'm not going to blame anybody for anything because um, I'm glad that it worked out the way it did. It made me search um, intently for it. And I had good parents that you know, had the Bible, you know, there, that, that that was something that we were, you know, to go to, and so I went there, and I looked for it, and I searched intently, and um, I started to realize that this flesh that I have, that is so weak, and gets in my way sometimes so much, is actually, it's actually here for a really good reason, and it, it's, you know, Jesus came in the flesh, but he was the Son of God. And Paul talks about walking in the Spirit. Um, and, you know, if you live by the Spirit, you can put to death the, the misdeeds of the flesh. And our flesh is always warring against the Spirit, and the Spirit is dis in a disagreement with the flesh. And the, the, the two are at odds. And we're like, well, how can that be? Like, what is, what is Jesus trying to get through to us? Because if we just live by the Spirit, we'd be fine, but he still gives us a flesh. And he wants us to flesh out what we see in the Spirit because that is what he did. He fleshed it out. He lived it. Um, and so I guess my testimony is I went all over the place. Last night I was writing stuff down and just thinking about what I'd say. And, um, I guess I was in Romans 6. I'll go there quick. Romans 6, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? But don't we know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. And I think I saw that in myself a couple weeks ago, and it was really surprising to me. Um, I've learned over time that when I get tempted, because I still do, um, to do the wrong thing, 
I need to go to the Bible. I need to fill my spirit because this, what's really happening is my spirit is hungering. It's hungering for the truth. It's hungering for knowledge. It's hungering for fulfillment. And if I don't feed it, my body's going to do something I'm not, I don't want to do. I'm going to regret it later. So um, I usually go to the Word. I, sometimes I pray. I really need to reach out to brothers and sisters more often. I'm bad at that. Um, but I guess... What I, I learned about myself was this temptation started coming back that I had a long time ago and um, just an empty part of my life that I never want to go back to. And um, in my mind, I don't want to go back to you, but my, my body still tempts me to go, go back there. And I guess what happened was I was so afraid that I would be tempted. And Jesus never says we won't be tempted. You know, He says we'll continue to be tempted. Um, so I was tempted and I was... And I was like right at the door and I'm giving in and I just realized I was like, I don't want this. Like my, my heart has been <laughs> changed and I don't want them anymore. Um, and that was just crazy to me. It was the strangest thing because it was like seeing the transformation in myself and my own heart where it's like, I don't want to use any of my um, body as a, a means to sin. Um, and I, I went to, I think it's here. Um, sorry. So Jesus was tempted in every way um, that we were, and actually, it's not there. Sorry, it's back here. Um, Romans. It's in Romans. It was Romans. I think six twenty four. There is no 624. Um, maybe 612, maybe. Yeah, okay. You said 612. All right, Fred, you know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> it says, Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to Him as an instrument of righteousness. And, yeah, it was strange, it was odd, it was like, I don't want to use my body as an instrument for evil. Um, and Jesus doesn't want me to either. Um, he's, he's made a way so I don't have to. He did it. You know, the, the big thing, I was reading a book, it said, the, the crazy thing about Christianity, it's not about do, it's about done. And it's been done for us. And we just have faith in that. And if we have faith, it's like if you put a faith in a boat, you know, and you're on a lake, you put all your faith in that boat, but if it has a hole in it, it's not going to save you. We have like a, we have a huge boat of Jesus, and so if we put our faith in it, we're not going to fall. Um, and if, I don't know, so that was, I guess that's kind of what I had. I won't go all into it, but I won't take up too much time for these other guys. But yeah, that, that was a transformation I saw myself, and I was just like, it's the real deal, you know, he, he is changing us from the inside out, and uh, if we love him, so, thank you. You're welcome. We're going to hear from our leadership team chair this morning, glad to have you here, Kelly, good to see you're doing better. I grew up. In the uh, church of the brother, church, my parents always took us to church every weekend. And as I got older, <clears throat> I didn't go to church. And, uh, I was going out to bars a lot, drank a lot, smoked a lot, still smoked a lot. Uh, but it wasn't perfect. And, I'm sorry, it's my voice. So, during that time, I uh, didn't go to church. A lot of the people that I grew up with and went to church uh, seemed like saints on Sunday and sinners on Saturday. And, uh, found out more as a hypocrisy 
But what I didn't realize was I was doing myself a disservice because I wasn't giving myself to God. I wasn't giving myself to Jesus. And I was letting others change my thoughts and impact my life. So here I am, <clears throat> later in my 30s, and dated a lot of crazy women. <laughs> Some that I thought was going to put me in Brooklyn. Um, I had a house. I was kind of struggling to pay to make all my debts. And my sister had two beautiful daughters, which <coughs> I always considered my kids. Um, but I had no wife, I had no kids. And I made a choice. I was going to put it in God's hands. God gave me Tammy, and she's been my rock. And my two beautiful kids. And I thank God every day for them. And I thank God that he's brought me to this church and to you folks. And I love the way each of you make everybody feel welcome, no matter what, because there's none of us that are perfect. We're all sinners. And I don't have any quotes <laughs> other than I know we can't make it to the Father unless we go through Jesus. So, thank you. Karen called last night. She said, I've asked Joseph and Kenton and Kevin to give a short testimony on what hope means to them. And I thought, where did she get that? Dumb me, the first candle is hope. <laughs> How appropriate. Only our pastor would put things together so organized and so well. I don't think we, any of us really realize what a wonderful pastor we have. Amen. I don't know if you know it, folks, but um, this doesn't come natural to me. It comes to me from God. I'm like uh, Kevin. Uh, without Jesus, without God in your life, <laughs> what good are you? What good can you do? I have the hardest part this morning because i got to follow these three guys. <laughs> and they all three did a wonderful job of relating what's on their heart. But the thing that's so encouraging to me, and, and it really speaks to the word of hope, is the fact that me, an old man, over the hill looking back, can stand up here and see three young men stand up and give credit to God for what He's done in their lives. I wish I could have done that at a younger age. <laughs> I might have become a preacher then, you know, who knows? <laughs> Somebody asked me that once and I said, well, I thought about it once, but it just wasn't in the cards, in my cards. <laughs> That's the difference. I think it's appropriate for us this morning, thinking about hope, to really look at what is the definition of hope. Well, the secular definition goes like this. It's a desire accompanied by expectation of a belief in fulfillment. 
Now think about the three testimonies you just heard. They all three had hope in Jesus. They didn't know it at the time, possibly, but they had hope that there was a better life for them. Did they not? It also can be explained as an ex expectation of fulfillment or success. Now, none of these three guys were looking for something unsuccessful, something bad for their lives. They were looking for something better in their lives. Would you agree? Yes. And they all got it. Why? Because of God. You could also say hope means something desired or hoped for. Now, what does that candle mean this morning to you when we lit it? I've never thought about the Advent uh, candle lighting service much. It's just something you do when you go to church. It's something you do. But what does that candle of hope hold for you this morning? Does it truly hold out hope that Jesus is coming again? Because that's where we are in this stage now. At that point, that before he was born, the hope was that he would, God would send somebody to earth. God would send somebody who would save his people. He's done that. Now that candle of hope to me this morning gives me the hope that, yes, the Bible is true and Jesus will descend in the clouds and he will call his beloved home. He will call his bride home. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, and I'm going to be reading from the NIV, this is what God tells us hope is. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So where does my hope come from? It comes from God and nobody else. It comes from God. I'm a firm believer that God does have a plan. He has a plan for me. He has a plan for each one of you. They're good plans. They're things that enrich our lives, plans that make us look forward to tomorrow, not regret it. Oh, Lord, did I regret Monday when, when I was working. <laughs> I hated Mondays. <laughs> Fridays, Wednesdays, I could care less, but Mondays I just hated. God takes that away. You don't regret. You don't not want to go to work. Why? Because now you have the hope that maybe I'll get the opportunity to share Jesus this day. Maybe I'll get the opportunity to help somebody else reach their goal, their hope to come true in their life. That's called plans that will fulfill us. You know, one of the plans that He has for each and every one of us, and some of us have, have reached fulfillment on this, some of us may not, and that is that we will develop a personal relationship with Him. <clears throat> now, I would venture to say everybody in here has a personal relationship with Jesus. Some deeper than others. Some stronger than others. But you've got that relationship with Him. Is it to the point that He will save you when He comes back in that cloud? I pray it is. When we look to Him for our salvation, we are then equipped to be His hands and His feet on this earth. Now, we just approved our Constitution last week. What does our mission statement state in there? We're to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We are to be making disciples. We are to be spreading the good news and help our brothers and our sisters to come to the saving grace of Jesus. What better hope, what better task, what better job could we have than making disciples for Jesus? One of the biggest hopes we have is that eternity with Him. The families that just suffered death in the past week or two, I can commiserate with them because we went through that in May. And I'm going to tell you, without Jesus, I don't know how you handle it. 
I don't know how you handle it. He truly, He truly can and will help us through any and every circumstance that crosses our paths. I'm a firm believer in that. I was like Kevin. I was rowdy. I ran around and all kinds of other crazy things. But when Jesus gets a hold of you, all that nonsense falls away. You don't want to do that anymore. Right, Joseph? <laughs> That's right. There's a different path. A path that God approves. A path that says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. In Hebrews 11.1, 1, also from the NIV, it says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Did you hear that? Did you really hear that? Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. It's hard to believe things we can't see, isn't it? That's where the world struggles. Well, show me, God. Well, you, I can't put a picture up other than a drawn picture. He's not someone that sits on the throne like Ramesses did in his day and ruled very firmly. But God is on his throne, and those of us who believe and have the faith that God has given us and the hope, we see God. Hmm. Do you think Peter had faith when he stepped out of the boat? <laughs> we talked about that, didn't we, Fred? <laughs> In our men's Bible study. As long as he kept his eyes where? <coughs> on Jesus. He walked right through that water. Right on top of that water, just like Jesus did. The instant he took his eyes off Jesus and looked hither, he started to sink. He lost his faith. He shouted, Lord, save me. <laughs> We're the same way. As long as we keep our eyes on Jesus and keep the faith that we have built through the years, through our faith in Jesus Christ and believing in Him and trusting in Him, there is nothing we can't do. We will be overcomers. We will be successful. We'll be victorious. We will be counted. We'll be counted in that number when Jesus comes back for his bride. Karen told me I needed to close this discussion time this morning out. And I thought, wow, <laughs> that's a tall task. And I didn't get it to task until 8 30 last night. But you know what? I didn't waver. I didn't tremble. I didn't get nervous. What did I do? I went and got that book and my computer and I started looking into hope. You know what I needed to do? I needed to just look right here. This is where my hope is. This is where my faith is. Right here. you got to have it in your hearts, folks. you got to have it right there. If you do, God will bless In Romans 15, 13, God says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow, what a closing to this morning's testimonies. What a summarization of the word of hope. Yes, God will fill you with joy and peace if you trust in Him. Do you trust in Him? I believe you do. I believe you do. I just pray that God will add His blessing to the words that have been spoken. I pray that God will bless those who came forward and shared their hearts. Um, when you're serving God, as Joseph said, it's hard to do wrong. As Kenton said, <laughs> When you're serving God, when God gets a hold of you, your life changes. You become His. Praise God.
Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you.